For a good portion of my life, I really wasn't all that interested in music, but after finding some bands that I liked, and later picking up playing bass, it really brought to the surface something subconscious from deep inside me. A new habit. When I first started learning slap bass and double thumb, in an attempt to practice the technique while my bass wasn't on my lap, I would just repeatedly do the motions on my lap. I quickly found myself having the innate desire to do this and started catching myself doing it while at work, sitting at my desk, at the supermarket, and just about every other place in between. As I became more proficient playing slap and picked up a few different techniques, I only found myself slapping my thigh even more. I would often think it'd be neat to learn cajon, but I'm more into the classic drum kit sound, so I looked at midi cajones a little bit, but after trying out a few, I could tell it's not quite the same as lap slap, and I don't really want to dedicate the time to learn yet another instrument. But then one day it occurred to me, what if I just put the midi in the pants? Now that is an idea. I've never really been a big fan of the way playing drums on a keyboard or rubbery drum pad feels. Sure, they're convenient and perfectly valid ways of tracking drums, but they lack that visceral feel of actually beating the sound out of something. Now is probably a good time to mention that I know next to nothing about playing an actual drum kit, and all my experience with recording drums comes from sequencing drum machines and playing them on a MIDI keyboard. So just assume that everything I say about drums is utter nonsense. For this project, I'd much rather be hitting on something that isn't springy, and I'd really like for it to be velocity sensitive, so something like your run-of-the-mill button or momentary switch isn't going to cut it. Luckily, a few years ago, I converted one of my bases to be able to output MIDI, and during that project, I experimented with these cool little discs called piezoelectric sensors. They contain a bit of a crystalline substance, like quartz, that when mechanically stressed, produces an electric charge across the crystal. In simple terms, you apply a force to the sensor, like hitting it, and it will produce a voltage that we can use as a trigger. And the harder you hit it, the higher the voltage will be. They're absolutely perfect for this use case. However, they're pretty fragile and a bit flimsy, so they're going to have to be housed in something solid. While doing lap slap, I typically mimic the thumb up slap and pop technique, doing the slapping near my pockets. A lot of the time, I'll have my phone and wallet in my pocket, so I'm already used to having an object that I'm slapping on. So ideally, I'd like to have the piezo housing to be around the same thickness as my phone and not any thicker. With the slap pop technique, I'm using my thumb and pointer finger, so that gives us a pretty intuitive spot to place our first two sensors on each side. Perfect for drum sounds like our kick, snare, and some hi-hats. I'd like a couple more sensors for something like a cymbal crash and maybe a cowbell, and I think down by the knees will be a good spot. A knee slap that produces a cymbal crash is just a hilarious idea to me for some reason. So that gives us a total of six sensors with accompanying housings that we'll be needing to mount in the pants. If we look at the oscilloscope, we can see that the piezos output a very quick pulse. This raw signal can't be used directly to control a MIDI instrument, so we're going to have to add something in the middle that can convert our analog signal to MIDI notes. In an effort to keep everything as compact as possible, I'm going to be using an Arduino Nano. We'll be able to load some code onto it and have it generate MIDI notes, which will then be used to control our drum sounds. The Arduino has a completely different form factor from the piezos, and it doesn't need to be in the pants since we aren't really interacting with it while playing. Initially, I was thinking about just keeping a little box with the Arduino in it in like my back pocket or clipping it on or something, but then I remembered that belts existed. The Arduino Nano is small enough that it could definitely fit in a custom belt buckle electronics box, and jeans come pre-made with this neat little access hole, so running the wires will be really easy. So now that we have a bit of a game plan for bringing my dreams of drum pants to life, Let's actually build it. Them. Why is pants even plural? If I have two pairs of pants, is that a pair of pairs? I'm going to start out by building the six piezo pucks, since I'm going to need those to actually make the code and test the device. I 3D printed these little housings that will be held together with M3 bolts and threaded inserts. The threaded inserts will also be used on the other side to attach these hoops and sandwich the denim in between them. Exactly like mounting a real drum head. Remember, I know nothing about drums. I'll have links to all the 3D printed parts in the description, but I can't imagine too many people are going to be chomping at the bit to build a pair of midi pants. I designed the housings with a recess in the bottom that fits these 27mm piezo discs. Where the piezo mounts, I made it pretty thin, at less than half a millimeter thick. I wanted this part to be extra thin so that as much of the energy from the hit as possible is transferred and that it isn't dampened by a load of plastic. I'm going to be using 3.5mm TS audio cables to connect everything up to the buckle box so each piezo puck will have one of these audio jacks installed in it. I already have a ton of these patch cables for modular synthesizer shenanigans and it gives me the option to change the position of the pucks later down the road if I want to. 
I mentioned earlier that the voltage produced by the piezo elements is related to how hard they're hit, and these little things can produce surprising voltages. It's very brief and low current, but it's still more than enough to potentially fry the Arduino. The maximum voltage the Arduino Nano analog input pins are rated for is 5 volts. You can actually go a little higher, but you didn't hear that from me. We're not going to be able to safely send the piezo signal straight to the Arduino RAW, so I'm going to add a 5.1 volt Zener diode in parallel with the Arduino near each piezo sensor. A diode is an electronic component that acts kind of like a one-way valve in that it only allows current to flow one way and not the other. But we don't really care about this property for this project. A Zener diode has a really interesting feature called a Zener breakdown voltage. When the Zener breakdown voltage is reached, current can flow the other way across the diode, and with the way that we're wiring it, it'll bleed off the voltage and limit it to 5.1 volts, which is perfectly safe for the Arduino. I'm also going to add a 1 mega ohm resistor in parallel to each Zener diode as well. This will ensure the piezos don't store any charge, and so that the Arduino can use the ground as a reference. Initially I tried configurations with the resistor omitted, but I got a lot of false triggers, so I think it's required for this application. With all our bits crammed inside a puck, I'm gonna upset some of you by adding a few drops of cyanoacrylate superglue to solidly mount the piezo in place. We can then insert some M3 threaded heat inserts and install the lid. I used what some might say is an excessive amount of these heat inserts in this project, but I love using these things. It's just so satisfying to set them into plastic. I like to make designs that use them every chance I get, and it's a lot nicer to have pre-made durable brass threads than playing around with 3D printed threads or trying to tap plastic and then inevitably stripping it out. I installed three more threaded inserts onto the other side, which will be used to mount the puck to the pants in a little bit. With one puck completed, we just have to repeat that five more times. And just like that, we've got all our drum pads. We can now move on to the belt buckle brain box, which should be a little less arduous. I once again whipped up and 3D printed this box that's going to be used to house our electronics, and then a lid for it that I modeled after one of these minimalist style belts. The Arduino mounts securely inside, and its mini USB jack is accessible from the side, which we'll be using for both power and sending the MIDI to the computer to control drums inside a DAW. Also inside the enclosure are six more 3.5mm audio jacks, just like the ones we used in the piezo pucks. I connected up all the ground pins from the audio jacks to one of the ground pins on the Arduino, and each of the positive pins from the audio jacks I connected to analog pins A7 to A2. There's not much else left to do inside the buckle box, so after installing four more threaded inserts, it's as simple as attaching the lid with four M3 screws, and finally turning this thing into a super stylish belt. Now that we have all the electronics out of the way, everyone can rejoice because we're finally going to actually do something with a pair of pants. I'm going to take one of our 3D printed hoops and place it at one of the pre-selected positions on the pant leg. With it in place, I'll quickly mark the locations of the three bolt holes and punch them with this janky setup. It'd probably be better to use something like a belt punch for this, but precision on this step isn't exactly vital. I'm next going to slip one of those piezo pucks down the pant leg of these not-so-indigo beauties and offer it up from the inside. Once it's in place, I'll fasten everything together with a few M3 bolts. I made sure the audio jacks were all facing upwards so that the audio cables aren't going to go all kinds of random directions in my pants. I can't imagine that would be particularly comfortable. With our six sensors now mounted to the jeans, I'll use different length audio cables, plug them into each puck, and run them up and out of our convenient access hole. As tempting as it may be, I'm not ready to put on the pants quite yet. The Arduino still needs programmed in order for it to actually do anything useful. So with that being said, let's cue the programming montage. I'm going to define some constants so it knows which pins to use, make the pins correspond to specific MIDI notes, I'll add some sensitivity parameters, debounce time will prevent multiple triggers from harder hits, now we'll actually send the notes through MIDI over serial, a little bit of supporting code, let's calculate the velocity of each hit, and time. Okay, so we now have some code that should do the trick, but we still can't play the pants quite yet, but we're in the home stretch. On the computer, we're going to need a few supporting programs to allow the Arduino to actually communicate with the DAW. Some Arduinos can utilize MIDI USB, but the Arduino Nano we used can't, so we're going to have to get a little creative. Our Arduino Nano acts as a serial device, so we're going to need a program called Hairless MIDI to convert our serial outputs into MIDI, and then we're going to need another program called Loop MIDI to route the MIDI signals to our DAW. I'll have links to where you can download both of these in the description. Inside Ableton, we can select our loop MIDI port under a MIDI device, and now we should be set up.
So was it worth it? Did it cure me of my habit? Am I now a professional electronic drummer? <laughs> oh, what am I doing with my life? All the components are relatively inexpensive, which most I already had on hand anyways, and it was a fun project to put together and problem solve, so I'd say it was worth the time I sunk into it. But don't be fooled, this is no life-changing instrument. This is more of a novelty or proof of concept at best. But I'll be honest, it is actually a lot of fun to play MIDI drums like this, and it's satisfying to do lap slap and actually hear drum sounds. I'll have links to all the 3D printable files, the code for the Arduino, schematics, and programs I used in the description. I'm sure not many people are looking to make MIDI pants, and I'm sure there's a better and more efficient way to code a MIDI controller, but this concept could be very easily adapted to better suit the needs of a drum controller with a different form factor. I've been having a good time playing around with MIDI drums, and I might revisit this concept in the future. But in the meantime, I'm going to be taking a break from my lap drumming career, and I'm going to be focusing on some more wacky projects like this radioactive synthesizer. I really hope you enjoyed this project. I sure had a lot of fun making it. Be sure to like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and if you like this kind of content, feel free to subscribe.